Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all have been safe and healthy during this bizarre and unprecedented time. My girlfriend and I are starting our ninth week working from home. We're lucky and fortunate to not have been laid off. Gigi, our cat, has been keeping us company as we try to learn all the new TikTok dances. The quarantine lockdown has been devastating for our friends, families, neighbors, and for corporate profits. The U.S. unemployment rate soared to 14.7% last month in April. The past two months amount to layoffs so severe, they more than double the 8.7 million jobs lost during the previous financial crisis. This graphic shows how 8.7 million jobs lost during the previous recession are in orange. The tiny gray bars at the top represents the 22.8 million jobs gained over 10 years. And then just last month, uh, Americans lost 20.5 million jobs in April, which is absolutely bonkers. Medical research teams are testing people, but a vaccine could realistically be 12 to 18 months out from now. So props to the people who are willingly being injected with the nasty nasty to test these vaccines. They're definitely very brave. We have government officials debating the reopening of parts of the economy while the United States is arguably on the brink of the worst economic collapse since the Great Depression. But alas, only time will tell if fully reopening sooner rather than later will cause an increase in people getting sick and or dying. So again, what a strange world we live in. Today's video topic is dividend growth investing for dummies. This is my allocations tab view of my personal capital account where I've linked all of my investment portfolios, investment accounts, and this is a common place that I can see all of this data in one place. So personal capital is a wonderful app. Um, you can see my asset class allocation here. Cash is still my, uh, you know, quite a large portion, almost 30% of my portfolio. I have uh, U.S. bonds here. I have international bonds, international stocks, as well as U.S. stocks. And if we scroll down, you can see how I'm broken out here now. Cash is still a large position and this investable cash is separate from my emergency monthly savings. So there's kind of multiple uses for this um, large cash position. Um, a lot of it also is my own risk tolerance. Um, having this much cash in bonds has definitely reduced volatility overall in my portfolio. And I can sleep better at night, you know. If I go to my holdings tab here, you can organize, I've organized it by this year as opposed to like 90 days or one year or last year. And you can see that I am compared to the S&P 500 or the market, um, I'm down about 4% while the S&P is down close to 9.5%. In Google, you can type in any ticker symbol and it'll show a graph of the performance by different dates. So we're gonna click on year to date and you can just hover your mouse at the very beginning here, January 2nd. We're gonna drag that all the way to the right. The S&P 500 has been down or is down 9.93% year to date. Returning back to my personal capital profile, I do want to mention one update that I did make to my Fidelity 401k. I'm going to organize my holdings list here in personal capital to show the top dollar value at the top here. So we have cash or investable cash at the top. Below that we have two funds in my Fidelity 401k. FXAIX is the S&P 500 index fund and FXNAX is the Fidelity US Bond Index Fund. 
So both of them are close to each other in value, about a 50-50% split. What I've done in my 401k here is I'm not going to rebalance. I'm going to leave it at this 50-50% split, but my future contributions have been dialed up to be 90% S&P 500 and 10% US bonds. The reason why I'm not rebalancing is that I've been reducing my current cash position here of 34,000 and reducing it by buying QQQ in my Vanguard taxable account. So I'm building up my positions and I'm increasing the value from from what it is now at 12,829. I'm also buying shares of VDIGX, which is currently at 8,095, and I'm also buying shares of the Vanguard Total International Stock ETF, which is currently at 2,727. So as it stands, my current asset allocation in terms of my stocks and bonds across my retirement and my taxable accounts is 70% stocks 30 percent bonds my current adjustments to my portfolios that i've made and what i explained um, just a moment ago is to bring my stock allocation to about 75 to 80 percent and bring my bond allocation down from 30 to about 25 or 20 percent here's another view of my asset summary as of may 8th 2020 just like my previous videos, I am reducing my investable cash to a more reasonable level. I'm going to be upping my stock allocation. Before showing you how to build a dividend growth stock portfolio at any brokerage, a disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor, and you should always do your own research when it comes to investing your hard-earned cash. I don't focus at all on dividend yield because I don't need current income from my investment portfolio. My primary job and side hustle are my sources of current income. Long-term positive total returns, which is price appreciation plus dividends, are all I really care about. Most of my stock exposure comes from tracking benchmarks like the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 index, both of which include dividend payers and non-dividend payers. Compared to how difficult it is to pick winning stocks, index funds on the other hand, especially the most common ones, provide less chance for error and generally less volatility because you're instantly diversified across hundreds and thousands of holdings. Index funds are also self-cleansing most of them rebalancing each quarter to remove companies that don't meet the index guidelines. As you dig deeper into the investing rabbit hole, it's a commonly known fact that most stock pickers fail to beat the major benchmarks like the S&P 500. Dated December 6th, 2019, here's one article talking about how in the past two years, only 22% of 16,000 global stocks have actually beaten the S&P 500. In the past five years, 82% of active funds, which means professional stock picking fund managers who do it for a living, underperformed the S&P 500. It really makes you wonder. So with all that said, let's build a simple dividend growth fund portfolio just for dummies. I've chosen M1 Finance because it has a nice clean interface and it allows you to invest exact dollar amounts into your holdings. However, any brokerage will do. Once you log into your M1 account, click on research and then click my pies. Then you're going to click create new pie we're gonna click on funds here at the top interestingly enough the list is already populated with funds that have the most assets under management so at the bottom of this list is VIG Vanguard dividend appreciation with 42.2 billion dollars assets under management 
We're gonna add this fun VIG, V-I-G, to the basket. We're gonna click on Add here at the bottom. We can rename it by clicking Edit. And let's call it Div Growth. And we're going to save here. And that's it. VIG Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Fund. One slice, one holding, dividend yield under 2% with an expense ratio of 6 basis points. You can read all about VIG on the Vanguard website to see that it tracks the NASDAQ US Dividend Achiever Select Index, formerly known as the Dividend Achiever Select Index. And that index tracks 182 US companies with a history of growing their dividends. The passive mutual fund equivalent is VDADX. For those who have Vanguard accounts, go Bogleheads. Back to the ETF here. With a yield lower than 2% and a low turnover rate of about 14% here, VIG is a tax-efficient fund if you choose to hold it in a taxable account. Remember that total return is price appreciation plus dividends. So while the dividend may be low at a, you know, hovering around 2%, let's see that. Hovering around 2%. The share price has seen excellent growth over the years. And we can see that performance. Instead of simply looking at average annual returns, which is not bad, I like to really focus on after-tax returns, especially returns after taxes on distributions and sales of fund shares. So since inception of 2006, it has Im uh, impressively returned 6.19%. So if you do more research, you'll find that that's very, very good for this type of U.S. dividend growth fund. In terms of total returns, check out episode 7 to see how various dividend-focused funds performed over time. Spoiler alert. With dividends reinvested, the S&P 500 has outperformed all dividend growth and all high dividend yield funds uh, in that particular study that I show. As always, seek out long-term data that includes at least one recession um, slash market crash. Five to 10 year old data will not include previous negative returns sparked by the great financial crisis, for example. Speaking of downturns like the one we just experienced, totally read the Wikipedia page, guys. The S&P 500 and VIG are both down 9% year-to-date through May 8th, 2020. Year-to-date, VIG is down... 9.18% High dividend yield funds are doing even worse. There are numerous dividend paying companies cutting or suspending their dividends as a result of this pandemic and economic shutdown, making dividend stock picking especially difficult during this time. VYM is a popular fund that focuses on U.S. companies currently paying a high dividend yield. SPHD, a fund that seems to be gaining traction recently, focuses on current high dividend yield plus low volatility. Year-to-date, VYM is down 17.5%. Through May 8th. Year-to-date SPHD is down 25.84% through May 8th. 
To recap, VIG is a tax efficient US large cap fund that currently tracks 182 companies growing their dividends each year. With Vanguard tracking its self cleansing market cap weighted index, it may easily outperform all the numerous dividend stock picking portfolios here on YouTube. Again, don't lose sight of total returns and dividends only grow when the company decides to increase dividends, not because dividends are reinvested. Dividend focused investors continually talk about reinvested dividends increasing their number of shares, but seem to forget that when a stock that doesn't pay a dividend increases in price by 3%, earning a 3% dividend is the exact same thing. Dividends aren't created out of thin air like an interest payment in a high yield savings account. 2020 isn't over yet, but as of May 8th, the S&P 500 has dropped almost 10%, while VIG has actually dropped a little less by almost 9.2%. The high dividend funds VYM and SPHD have suffered a lot worse than the overall market and a dividend growth fund like VIG. Looking at back tests, U.S. dividend growth and U.S. high dividend yield funds have overall underperformed the U.S. market or S&P 500 over time. And compared to the overall market, dividend growth tends to be slightly less volatile while returning only slightly less than the market, which is a, 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 an exact reason why a portion of my stock allocation is tracking VDIGX, which is the Vanguard Dividend Growth Fund, and that's meant to reduce volatility in my portfolio. High yield dividend funds consistently underperform dividend growth and the overall market, yet have the same amount of volatility as dividend growth. So kind of take what you will with this given information, do your due diligence, always pave your own path when it comes to investing. I really hope you enjoyed this particular video about how to construct a dividend growth portfolio for dummies. Until next time, everyone, thank you so much.